And I said, well, why did you get pulled over? He said he had, they pulled him over because he had air fresheners hanging from the rear mirror. Brooklyn Center police located in Minnesota shot and killed a 20-year-old black man on Sunday, just miles away from where George Floyd was killed last May. This time, 20-year-old Dante Wright was shot by police after they pulled him over for having an air freshener hanging from his rear view mirror. An air freshener. Now, I'm going to play the body cam footage, which was just recently released as of recording this. I'm also going to show you uh, his mother's comments, who was on the phone with him at the time. And I'm also going to show you the uh, crazy defense coming from the police and uh, my thoughts on that. So first up here is the body cam footage. This, I guess you could say, is graphic, though it is hard to, to see what's going on when the shooting takes place. Um, but with that said, here's the video. All right, now I'll get to his mother's comments and the defense from the police force coming in a minute here. But first, you could tell from the video, there was a traffic stop, a, and by the way, again, the traffic stop because he had an air freshener on his rearview mirror, which apparently, I guess, is illegal in Minnesota. But as you'll see from the ACLU's comments that I'll get to in a second, this these sorts of stops apparently happen all the time as an excuse to pull over black men. But you had that situation here. Uh, he ended up having a a warrant. Uh, I'll get to what that's about. And then clearly the the uh, the kid there freaked out and got back in the car. That does not warrant him being shot. So people will use. You can already see it coming from conservatives. Well, look what he did. He didn't comply with the officers. Does that mean he deserved to get murdered? So there has to be an understanding here about the kind of force that should be or that is allowed in a situation like this. And I'll also get to, as you'll see, that the officer at least appeared on camera to act like it was maybe a mistake, hinting at in a minute here how the officers are, are, are treating this. I'll get to my thoughts on that in a bit, but... First, I just want to show you from uh, from Reuters here. So in a statement, Brooklyn Center Police said officers pulled over a man for a traffic violation just before 2 p.m. and found he had an outstanding warrant. Uh, now, I've only found one. I did a lot of search and trying to find out what this warrant was about. Um, I only found this from Chris uh, Chris Rapsky. So he is a uh, an anchor and reporter for KARE uh, 11. Says here, Dante Wright had an outstanding warrant for gross misdemeanor carrying a pistol without permanent misdemeanor fleeing police. The warrant issued April 2nd after he failed to appear for court. So that's apparently what the warrant's about. Again, none of this really matters in this situation because this is about somebody being shot after being pulled over. In a situation where the cops' lives were not at risk. So this was a, an unlawful shooting. Now, the ACLU put out a statement here saying in part... The ACLU of Minnesota calls for an immediate, transparent, and independent investigation by an outside agency other than the Brooklyn Center Police or the BCA, and for the quick release of any body cam footage, which we just got. We call for the naming of all officers and agencies involved. The ACLU Minnesota has deep concerns that police appear to have used dangling air fresheners as an excuse for making a pretextual stop, something police do all too often to target black people. It is really just crazy to me that he was pulled over for an air freshener. Like, goddamn, just to to have that as the as the pretense for the end of your life is really just unbelievable. Now, let me get to um, the comments from his mother here, who again was on the phone with him at the time. He called me at about one forty, said he was getting pulled over by the police, and I said, "Well, why did you get pulled over?" He said he had, they pulled him over because he had air fresheners hanging from the rear mirror. I said, okay, take them down. And he said, mom, they want to know about insurance. I said, I will, I said, I will, um, when the police officer comes back to the window, put him on the phone and I will give him the insurance information. Then I heard the police officer come to the window and say, put the phone down and get out of the car. And Dante said, why? And he said, we'll explain to you when you get out of the car. 
So I heard the phone get either put on the dashboard or dropped. And I heard scuffling and I heard the police officer say, Dante, don't run. And then the other officer said, put the phone down and hung it up. And then two, like a minute later, I called and his girlfriend answered, which was the passenger in the car and said that he'd been shot. And he, she put it on the driver's side and my son was laying there lifeless. And then I said, where are you? And she said, I don't know. And the other officer said, hang up the phone. She hung up the phone and I called 911 to find out where they were. Then I get here and there's a car accident and my son's laying on the ground. And he was only 20 years old and he didn't deserve to be shot and killed like this. And I don't want all of this, all of this. I just want my baby home. That's all I want is I want him to be home. I don't want everybody out here chanting and screaming and yelling. I just want him home. That's it. There you go. I I'm not even sure what to say. Um to be on the phone with him while this is happening. This is not something you get over. Now, let me play for you the uh, what the police force is saying here. So this is the defense right now that they're using. As I watch the video and listen to the officer's commands, it is my belief that the officer had the intention to deploy their taser, but instead shot Mr. Wright with a single bullet. This appears to me, from what I viewed and the officer's reaction and distress immediately after, that this was an accidental discharge that resulted in the tragic death of Mr. Wright. I have asked the BCA to conduct an independent investigation into the shooting and death. Once they are completed, I expect they will submit their findings, independent of me, to the appropriate authorities, the appropriate attorneys that will, that will look and review this case. All right. So... The defense here is that it was an accident. They thought they were holding their taser the entire time. They were in fact holding their gun, shot one bullet thinking they were shooting the taser and killed Dante Wright. Now, first let's address just that on, on its merits. That's still third degree murder. You killed somebody by accident, but you killed them. Your actions led to their death. That's still third degree murder. But also, you don't get the benefit of the doubt anymore. How many times have we seen police defend blatantly disgusting actions again and again and again and again and again? It's like the boy who cried wolf. You do that so many times, you lost your ability to have the benefit of the doubt. So in this situation, even if it was an accident, you can't expect people to believe you because of how often you have defended the indefensible. Now, my own read, looking at the video in a vacuum, having nothing else, you know, if you just, just saw that video, completely out of context, not understanding the, the history of what the police have done, just looking at that video completely out of context, yeah, I would think my, my initial impression is that it could have been an accident because of the way that the officer was yelling taser, because of the fact that it was one shot and not multiple shots, that could have been an accident. But as I said, you no longer get the benefit of the doubt. So, and regardless, I mean, how incompetent do you have to be? How effing incompetent do you have to be to be holding a gun thinking it's a taser? It's unbelievable to me that you could be that stupid. Now, a couple of tweets here I saw, I want to share because I think these are... This is a fantastic point here. This posted by a Soul Revision, who is the uh, is the co-founder of McClure Deed Bail Fund, saying here, in light of Dante Wright's murder by police, these politicians and police are going to try and tell you that police need more training. I can't urge you enough to reject that. They've been getting more training for decades. It's code for more money. As someone who was not always an abolitionist and who was deeply reformist and pushed for reforms like body cams, more training, etc., I can tell you these things do nothing to disrupt or stop police violence ever. So I think this is a great point. When you hear more training, that means more money for cops. As I've said in other videos covering similar situations like this, 
you have to take power away from the police. You have to defund the police. Defund doesn't mean, in my view, others may disagree. Defund doesn't mean you completely get rid of the police. It means they have limited value in society. They have a, a limited focus. You need, you cannot have these massive police unions that are always defending the most indefensible actions that get away with practically everything continue killing people, clearly have a, a disproportionate impact on black people and, and black men in particular, you cannot have these organizations continue having as much power as they do. And the only way to change that is to limit their funding, move resources away to other areas. Mental health calls should go to mental health professionals, for example. Calls about the homeless should go to professionals in that area and on and on and on. So Yes, there, I think there is a limited role for police in society, but it, at the same time, it can be completely reimagined. I mean, and when people talk about, you know, abolishing the police, they also don't mean that there's, you know, no longer any laws or, or any enforcement of laws. That's not what that means. It means completely abolishing the way that police currently exist in society. So I think that is definitely something worth exploring based on what has happened or what keeps happening again and again. And this is just another example.